if you could announce, uh, Senator West, the uh, cause number and case name that we're here on. John, uh, first of all, uh, I'd ask that I just be referred to as Attorney West. As I'm sorry. It's, it's I, habit. I, I understand. I, and I appreciate it. Uh, Mike does the same thing. I, I, I do. It's out of respect. Yes. I, and I do. Uh, okay. This is cause number DC 20 09893, uh, David Tyler Moss against. Holly Bone Martin et al. Council, make your appearances. Royce West and Craig Capua are here for the plaintiff. Dan Wide for the plaintiff. Gene DuBose for defendant. Um, Michael Hurst, David Cole, and Leo Park here on behalf of non party Google. All right, and as I uh, indicated earlier, we previously set this for hearing. Uh, it was gonna be a temporary injunction. The court did not have time to hear a temporary injunction given our massive backlog we have right now due to COVID uh, and a trial that I had going on. And so instead I granted or indicated I would grant a TRO that had previously been heard by this court. Uh, apparently in the process of admitting people into the Zoom call, Mr. Hurst was not led into the Zoom call. I'm not sure how that happened, but apparently it, that's what happened. And so uh, in respect for Mr. Hurst, we are rehearing this hearing, but I'm very abbreviated for time. I don't really know that TRO requires a hearing, but I do want to hear from you. I'm going to, uh, unless there's an objection, my thought was to admit all of the affidavits that were submitted today and the declarations does anyone have any opposition to admitting the affidavits and declarations that were submitted today? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Mr. Hurst? No, certainly not. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. So all of those will be admitted. Uh, I'm not sure who's going to argue for the plaintiff, and, and respectfully, we don't have a lot of time. So I've read everything. I'm not sure what else. I mostly want to hear from Google, to be honest, but uh, I'll hear from anyone. Everyone has five. Each of the three sides have five minutes. Mr. Capua or Mr. Uh, Senator, sorry, Mr. West, uh, would you uh, uh, like to proceed? Yes, Your Honor, and I'll be very uh, brief with it. Uh, this court issued a uh, temporary injunction back on October 15th, 2020, and during certain conduct um, in this particular case as it relates to the assets, uh, the court should take notice that at least on two occasions, uh, uh, the defendant, Holly, um, did two different things. Number one, uh, the house that was a part of the TRO, which was an asset, was uh, sold in uh, Collin County. That's Exhibit 2. Uh, she also testified in her affidavit on page 2 that she admits to uploading videos from Futuristic to Wildcraft. And you, you had uh, prohibited any transfer of the material and assets from Futuristic. She's done that. There's nothing to lead this court to believe in exercising your inherent authority that she would not do uh, the same thing in terms of in terms of wildcraft making certain wildcraft turns around and goes to another entity that would be beyond the court. I want the court to understand that wildcraft right now is a asset of a corporation uh, uh, LLC, a limited liability corporation called Wildcraft MC that's in the UK. If the court does not grant our request then the assets will be beyond the reach of the court uh, to satisfy damages that we believe that will in fact be incurred by the defendants. And so for that, I can go on and on, Judge, but I do believe- So, so let, let, let me ask this. I guess I understood that the TRO was mostly about the videos that had been transferred from Futuristic Hub to Minecraft. Is there also something involving the house? Maybe I missed that. No, that, well, the house is, is subject to a fraudulent conveyance. And okay, okay, but it's not nothing on this TRO. Right. Okay. Mr. De anything else, uh, Mr. West or Mr. Capua? Not at this point, sir. Mr. DeBose, you have five minutes. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as I stated in my original response to this, uh, the requirements for a TRO are not met. Uh, there is no uh, irreparable injury. All they're asking for is money. And um, for that grounds alone, it shouldn't be prevented. They're also trying to take assets that belong to a Great Britain 
corporation. And that party, that they are not before us whatsoever. Um, they have filed a number of affidavits um, claiming that Mr. Martin made statements that it was he who owned the uh, videos and the channels. And they are two different things. Ownership of the channel is a matter of the way that YouTube is run. The ownership of the uh, videos is a matter of uh, copyright. Um, two of those, uh, probably the two affidavits on which they most rely, which are uh, Marco Princip and uh, Chrissy Barmore, we have put forward documents from them showing that they have lied under oath. So they've lost, they've lost out on that. But the question here is taking away income. This has not been something that's been in this case whatsoever. Uh, the corporation that owns them and pays taxes on them in Great Britain is not before the court. Um, beyond that, you know, my client, this is, this is her only source of income. It's a much reduced source now from what it used to be. Uh, this is a woman, um, and I would request that the court listen to her father's deposition about what kind of a childhood she had. It was terrible because of her autism. And the only thing with which she found happiness was making videos. And he saw that in Britain when she was 12 and started doing this stuff. And he bought her computers so she could continue to do it. And one of the videos that we've got as exhibits is showing a couple of days ago, uh, her husband took a video of her up putting together a um, video before the camera in a matter of a few minutes. It wasn't a polished thing, but you could see out there, her hands were flying over. She can do that. He doesn't know how to do this. Um, he's made some foolish mistakes, uh, but that shouldn't affect my client. Uh, this is her life's work. It is the only way she has to grasp sanity in the world. And uh, she is much destroyed by what's happened now. You've seen her. She'll just burst out into tears because it's tearing so much away from me. And she really does not understand. And that's, that's because the, of the autism. People with autism don't know what the norms of society are. And they're always stumbling across it. And I know how much effective that could be. I had a uh, autistic... Minute autistic nephew who, when he got distressed by a tax online in um, uh, he, uh, at three o'clock in the morning in California, he lay his head on a railroad track and was decapitated. It's a very disabling condition. She's found the one thing that gives her joy and that she can do extremely well. Um, Mr. Keating in his deposition admitted the only way you can tell whether some who is doing a, uh, the animation is to see them do it. And her father saw her doing it at the age of 12 and 13, bought equipment for her. This is, she's been shunted, shunted to the side in this case. And she said in her deposition, uh, in her statement to the court that, you know, she's heard you say that you're not going to believe her. She's heard you say that you've seen all this before and it doesn't make any difference. And she feels that that's just unfair. And I think it is too, Your Honor. We're so close to trial. It seems to me a pointless exercise to go through this because it's all going to be settled by the jury in another, I guess, three weeks now. And so I think for that reason alone, it should, be, should not be done. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Hurst, you have five minutes or whoever on your side. Mr. Hurst, we can't hear you. Sorry, may it please the court, Your Honor. Uh, it'll be it'll be me. Thank you. I don't know what I missed uh, the other day, uh, yesterday, whenever it was, that persuaded Your Honor to issue what I believe. Once I 
speak for five minutes, you will understand is improper and frankly, an illegal temporary restraining order, not knowing exactly what the restraining order is. Uh, I, I will tell you, Your Honor, as a non-party, as Your Honor knows, since my firm has been involved in this case, Google has made every attempt to cooperate with the court's wishes. Google has spent weeks and weeks and hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to respond to dozens of discovery requests and in re-engineering its systems in order to freeze disputed, the original disputed YouTube channels and redirect account revenue to the court's registry. We engaged as a non-party uh, in, the, in the mediation to try to cooperate and to try to assist your honor, Judge Hoffman. And without a court order, we deposited monies from Futuristic Hub and the other three Brian Martin uh, channels into the registry of the court. That's what's been done so far, and it's been at great expense and year and, and weeks and weeks and weeks of Google manpower and a lot of expense. Your Honor, while Google is not a party, everyone keeps demanding that Google does the heavy lifting for the parties and the court. This is, Your Honor, this is, there's a trial in less than three weeks, as Mr. DeBose just indicated, and Your Honor is about to order post-judgment collections, it sounds like. Google, it seems like, if you use a metaphor, is simply a, a pinata in this case and a party being hosted by this courtroom where the parties on each side keep taking wax at us. We're being forced to bear the expense, um, that bear the expenses of this dispute rather than the parties themselves. And if this were a garnishment action, Your Honor, which you had mentioned before, which it is not, but if it were, and Google was a financial institution as defined by the finance code, which it most certainly isn't, then Mr. West and his clients would have to comply with the garnishment statutes. And among those garnishment statutes, they would be required to post a large bond and they'd be, they would have been required to pay the ex extensive expenses incurred by us as garnishee and getting there. And I will tell you, the expenses are gonna swamp the boat of the, of the amount of, of revenue that potentially could be collected in the first place. Your Honor, there is no emergency here. There is, there, it, it, there's a one week deadline, which we're not gonna be able to comply with. And we would respectfully ask Your Honor to, to have a stay can in I any ask, of can, can I ask a question that came sure. up the other day? And I think this, you asked kind of what, what came up that, that made me sure. uh, concerned and, and, and potentially reconsider yeah. this is that I was told that there is a tranche, I, I guess is what they, the term that was used, of payments that are about to be made uh, to, uh, as a result of videos that are, that were on uh, Futuristic Hub, I'm sorry, I'm have to reorient from this trial, I've been from Futuristic Hub to Wildcraft, uh, that, that these Wildcraft videos, the, the, the revenues from those videos are about to be paid out, I think, and I don't remember the exact date, but I wanna say it was like March 21st maybe. And that was not something I had known when we had the original TRO hearing that these things were paid in tranches. And so that's what the, and, and I don't understand, I guess, and I, you know, it's, I, I was talking to another judge, somebody that we all, all very much respect about this and, and it, one thing I kind of came to the realization when talking with her is that the electronic world, you know, the internet, the world of the internet and our legal system are not completely, you know, I kind of have a meat cleaver on how I deal with this. Um, but I, I, I do analogize it to, this is a revenue stream kind of like you would see with a bank. And I'm, I guess I don't know why it's so expensive I can't imagine this is the only time that Google's ever had to divert income from one person to another uh, because of a court order. Maybe it is the first time. I don't know, but I, that seems hard to believe. But that's all we're really trying to do is is uh, no one. I don't want you guys to treat Mr. Hurst or Google as a pinata. And I'm sorry that Google feels that way or you feel that way. That was never the intention. But we're simply trying to make sure that the assets that might belong to the judgment debtors. I think it's in all probability probably that they belong to the judgment debtors uh, are protected for the time of trial because once they're distributed, uh, as we know, that's very hard to get them back. And so that's the only thing in, in, that, 
that really Google is responsible for is making sure that the, the, the stream of income that's coming from those these contested videos uh, gets paid into the registry of the court. And, and maybe there's a reason that's so expensive. Maybe this is the first time this has ever come up, uh, but it doesn't seem like that should be so difficult, but maybe this is the first time it's come up, but I, maybe that's, you know, once you do this once, maybe they'll have processes in place that will allow them to do this more easily in the future because we're living in a world where TikTok and uh, YouTube and I'm sure there's others that are more technologically savvy uh, can come up with where people, uh, what is it called? Anyway, I'm sure there's other ones out there where people could make income off the internet. We have to be able to track that just like we have to be able to track income that comes from a bank. And so I'm not, I guess I'm not conceptually understanding why this is, why Google, uh, I understand Google's frustrated because it'd be easier if they didn't have to comply with the same rules that the bank, a bank does. Uh, but I'm not sure why they should be treated differently. Admit, that, admit. That people are, and, and really it's not just them, but why should people who earn income through their sites be treated differently than people who earn income by operating on patients or earn income from um, digging ditches or earn income from that they can, we can garnish their wages, but people who earn income by posting videos and, and doing that, which I'm not criticizing that, I'm, you know, they deserve to be paid. But why should they be trade? Why should we treat this type of revenue separate differently than we do all other types of revenue. If I could respond to all of that, Your Honor, because that, that you asked some great questions, and I'll and I'm going to put aside for a second that there is no emergency. They've known about Wildcraft for a year. Put aside the temporary restraining order issue because that's you know, proper. Putting aside the amount of expense and money and the complications with doing exactly what you're wanting to do, Your Honor, you can't garnish wages, and this is not a garnishment garnishment action in any event. If this were a bank. If this were a bank and you were to issue a prejudgment writ of garnishment based upon somebody's bank account, as, you're, as you know, it's a very, very difficult and extraordinary time to try this, to- This isn't pre-garnishment. We, we have a judgment in place. This is all about the enforcement of a judgment. It's me. not because Holly Bone is the one who opened the Wildcraft channels. That's the problem. Your Honor, Holly Bohm, whatever scam that y'all believe that she may be performing, and she may very well be, but she is the one that, that is a defendant in this case, represented by counsel at the hearings. If she receives revenue and you want to order her to pay the revenue into the registry of the court, fine. But what you're effectively doing, Your Honor, this is not a temporary restraining order. This is a, an attempt at a mandatory injunction meaning you're ordering not the status quo, but you're ordering something to be done that's not done to preserve the status quo. But Your Honor, even if this if this was not a mandatory temporary injunction um, and it was a, uh, well, there's a case, I, I'm going to just tell you, Judge, this, this, this is going to solve it. And this is why I don't want to have to raise this, but there is a case that is directly on point. And it's a Dallas Court of Appeals case. Um, putting aside the electronics and the, and the fact that we're not a financial institution under the finance code, the case that's cited in our brief is Behringer Harvard versus Skokos. And it's a 2009 Westlaw 475-6579. It's a 2009 Dallas Court of Appeals case. And what can the whole- you, Can you share screen that? Um, do you have, can you have the case? Yeah. Sure. And, and may I read the holding to you while we're sharing the screen? Well, yeah, yeah you know, it's it, it Mike, excuse me, Judge, will I get an opportunity to respond? Yeah. Okay. The, the, the case, oh, there you go. Thanks. The case, Your Honor, stands, well, is quote unquote, by requiring relators to deposit funds in the registry, the trial court is effectively attached to the property. A litigant cannot avoid the strict requirements of a writ of attachment by calling it another name. And putting aside, this is a writ of attachment applies to parties, not non-parties. Okay, we're a non-party. But if, putting that aside, it says a litigant cannot avoid the strict requirements of a writ of attachment by calling it another name. 
we conclude a trial court does not have authority beyond the purview of the attachment statutes to order that funds be deposited in the court's registry to generally secure payment of possible future judgment. So your, your honor, even if you could, even it, well, if, if they could, if they had filed this as a prejudgment writ of attachment, which is the, 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 the standards for that are incredibly oppressive. But if, if this was a prejudgment writ of uh, attachment, and, uh, which is instead of being a mandatory TRO um, against a non-party, first, you can't get one against a non-party. But even if you could, the Dallas Court of Appeals makes it abundantly clear that you can't circumvent the rules by calling it a TRO. That's what that case stands for. Um, so, Your Honor, this mandatory TRO that is putting the onus on us as opposed to the parties is, I mean, it is per se unlawful. And, and, and if, again, if Your Honor, if, if upon a proper filing, and I'm not here saying whether it's a garnishment or attachment or, or whatever it is that they would have to file against uh, or, or a temporary restraining order against Holly Bone, and you're ordering whatever revenue she receives to be deposited into the registry of the court, we have no say in that. We, we have no, no position on that whatsoever. All we know is that you cannot issue a temporary restraining order to order us to turn over revenue in some way, shape, or form that's generated by someone that's not even that that's not even a uh, that's not even a judgment debtor yet. And, and so, Your Honor, I, 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 we're, we're three weeks away from trial, and Leo can talk about the the complications and what has to happen or potentially has to happen for. Um, something like this to happen anyways, but we would, you know, if we asked for a stay um, so that we could uh, review our appellate rights, it, 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 this, this won't be decided before this case goes to trial. And so I, I, don't, I don't understand why your honor is, is considering entering a post-judgment essentially collection before three weeks before this trial starts and in violation of whether, whatever it would be, the, 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 the Civil Practice and Remedies Code, the Rules of Civil Procedure, the Garnishment Statutes, Attachment Statutes. I don't, I don't know what it is, but, but the animal that they filed it under to try to avoid the, the standards of attachment, to try to avoid the standards of garnishment, to try to somehow force your honor to put revenue generated by a non-party into the registry of the court Look, I have another case in another court where I would love to have done that. I would love to, to, to ask the judge to do exactly what you're doing, but we haven't been able to find any kind of vehicle by which to do it. A temporary restraining order is not the vehicle to do it. And so, Your Honor, I, I, rather than committing, I mean, unequivocally error by issuing this temporary restraining order. Sir, uh, I get it. Response. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm sorry. First of all, Yana, I disagree with my learned colleague on this particular case, in part, okay? I think the court needs to look at, I, I'm, I'm looking at Head Note 5, okay? Let Can me, you pull up Head Note 5, Mr. Hurst? You're, you're yes, muted. We will. And Mr. Hurst, you can remain unmuted, just so. Okay. Uh, what's that about? Roy, switch pages then on. Actually, uh, uh, in terms of ooh, well, the way I printed it out, it's on two of six, but in terms of in the, uh, it's head note five. It doesn't have page number. Let's see. Uh, I believe it's on 10. On page 10. Page 10. There's only four pages. We're going to mess it up there. Four pages. But what? Go to, the, go to the top. I think you guys must have different versions of this. Probably. Is this the right one? That you're looking at, uh, Mr. West? Uh, no. I'm Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright. Is this out of your, this is out of your court, Your Honor? I just noticed that. 
Yeah, and I remember in this case. And I remember, and I know the lawyers. I didn't know she knows that too. When I finish on this, I really would appreciate it, Mike. Okay, uh, Judge, uh, we're trying to find the head note. It's head note five. It's provisional remedies attachment. Uh, in terms of the page that it's on, I don't have the page is not shown here, but it is in fact the same case. Okay. And if we need to send it down to the court, we, we will send it down to the court and all other parties. This is what it says. Uh, Mr. Hirsch's argument is partially correct. Uh, and this obviously came out of your court. And I'm not trying to intimidate the court or anything like that, but this is what it says. A trial court does have some inherent authority while, without implicating the attachment statutes or a defendant to deposit funds to the court's registry. However, this authority arises when there is a dispute, which there is here, about a particular fund, which it is here, specifically if the plaintiff can show a dispute about a fund and show the fund is in danger, which it is, of being depleted, which it is, the trial court can order the fund be deposited in the registry of the court. So judge, I believe that that language within itself gives the court the authority to do exactly what the court knows is right to do in this instance. And that, I remember, wh where is that? I saw that. Um, it's, and I'm trying to, I think. It's, I it, it, it's, is, that, is it footnote yeah, four? There, there I see it, okay. You got it? I mean, it's still yeah. Problem. Okay. And so the does, court does have authority. And another one of the cases cited by my learned colleague, uh, uh, is uh, R, P, and R, Inc. versus Torito. And again, I, I, have, a, I have a Lexus copy right here. And uh, Can you share a screen that case, Mr. Hurst? Mr. Hurst, please unmute. Yes, Your Honor, sorry. Um, can I share a screen of the, of the other case? Yeah, what's the, what's the case you're saying, Mr. Rust? Okay, it is the R, P, and R, Inc case that you guys cited, Dorito, 32, Southwest Second. Good job, thank you. Okay, and Judge, again, uh, it's a Lexus copy that I have. I'm getting back into the practice of law. It feels pretty good. Um, injunction, unless it is clearly established by the facts, the one seeking such relief is threatened with an actual irreparable injury if the injunction is not granted. While granting a mandatory injunction is within the sound discretion of the trial court, the grant should be denied absent a clear and compelling presentation of extreme necessity. Judge, when someone, when you order someone to do something and they turn around and does, do something contrary to what you ordered, I think um, as a matter of law, that's a necessity. The Are necessity, you talking about the selling of the house? Selling of the house and the transferring of futuristic uh, uh, assets to wildcraft. That's what I'm talking about. You told them not to do it, and they did it. I think Mr. Hurst raised, you, you made some excellent points here uh, in this, and I do remember the Skokos case. It was I was a brand new judge when that came out, and and I learned a lot from that. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting case, very different from this one. There was no judgment in place like there is in this one that the, this court is simply trying to you know, allow the mechanism to go forward to collect the judgment when so many of these assets have been uh, dispersed. Uh, and I apologize that Google's having to go through all of this. Uh, Mr. West, uh, I am going to grant the TRO, but I do want uh, it very clearly stated within the TRO, and I want you to work with Mr. Hurst on this and Mr. DuBose, the language, this is part of my inherent authority to do a mandatory injunction, cite to all of the different issues that you've discussed uh, so that if this goes up on appeal, that the Court of Appeals understands why I'm doing this, uh, the history of this case, the history of dispersing assets by Mr. Martin and uh, the, the hiding of assets that we've seen so far. And uh, I, I am going to provide that uh, the, the bond on this will be significant. So we're going to do a, a $10,000 bond. Uh, and uh, so I want you to share the terms of that. And if there's a way that this is can be done more easily, Mr. Hurst, uh, to make it, uh, I don't want, understand why it's so difficult. So maybe if there's something that we're ordering that's causing all of this expense, 
um, that we could make it easier and cheaper for Google. I'm open to suggestions. I'll talk to Mr. West about that. I want you guys to work on the form of the order. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Yes, yes. Your Honor, a, a couple, a couple of notes. Uh, you ordered Google has made two de has made two deposits. Uh, can you uh, order Google to uh, update the money's deposit within the next ten days, uh, and then? Uh, and I'm not fall update update the monies. I'm not sure what right. there were monies in uh, Google accounts for futuristic hub uh, and that was deposited into the courts. Let, let me just say this. If you want to contact the, the court, the, the trustee's office, they should have that information. Let's try not to make Google do stuff, more stuff than they need to. I understand where Mr. Hurst is coming from, that this has become very expensive to Google. So let's, let's, that's something we can get some other way. At all due respect, there's no evidence to set at all of this record. Okay. It's just, it's just uh, Mr. Hurst, probably your respect, there's no evidence in the record of the expenses associated with it. What okay. Mr. Hurst agreed with, and I think, I think I'm right about this, is that they, they would deposit the revenue from Futuristic Hub into the registry of the court. That was over a year ago. And I think Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, the last deposit was made back in December of 2020. Since that time, nothing has been deposited. It has there been no other deposits made into the registry of the court from? No, Your Honor, nor, nor is there an order, nor is Mr. West's request set for today, Your Honor. I mean, I, if, this is, if this is just going to be, let's just throw out requests and demands against. No, no, I, I, I agree with you, Mr. Mr. Hurst. I, I just, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, let's, let's get the, I, I'm sorry, I got to get back to my trial. So let's go ahead and get this, this order. It's going to be as to these the particular videos, like I said before, that were on Futuristic Hub that have migrated to Wildcraft, any revenue associated with that, uh, with those videos will be deposited in the registry of the court. Uh, for the new videos that were never on Futuristic Hub, uh, we're not going to have any type of TRO and those, that fund can, can, those funds continue to be uh, transferred to the, um, uh, to the, the British corporation. So, Your Honor, I, first, um, it is going to be impossible. I'm just letting Your Honor know it is going to be impossible to effectuate what Your Honor is ordering prior to March 21st, um, which is five, six days away. I was going to ask Your Honor to provide us a stay of your order in any event because we do have to seek appellate relief on this. And that's a uh, um, so I don't, I don't know how your owner wants to handle it. I don't want to be in contempt because we cannot comply with something with, with, with this particular order. But if, uh, so I, I want to at least let your honor know that this is, would, would it be easier if you just, if you, instead of depositing register the court, you just not distribute. I, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a, it's a fair question. Um, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have to confer with the client on that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the mechanisms on that. I, I have not asked the client that. If there's a way, I mean, I, I don't want you to be in contempt either. I don't know what it technologically is required to do this. And so it's exactly. easier for you guys just to not do a distribution and wait until after the uh, trial. That That's also an option. If that's that's easy. We're, okay with it. we're okay with that also. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay if, that, if that's, if that's right, easier. Well, we, 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 we can confer with our client and get back to you and, and Royce and Jean ASAP. Okay. Uh, I, it's, will, it's, I will, I do probably have a little bit of time tomorrow. If there's, if you guys have some problems with the issues, uh, issues involving the terminology and the order, I'm happy to talk about that tomorrow. I don't really want to get into a lot of other stuff, but uh, I should have time tomorrow if you do need uh, any type of quick emergency hearing to talk about the terms of the order. Thank you. And, and Tony, can we please, if, with all due respect, is there, I know you've been, been in a trial. Is there any way to get an expedited transcript? If, and I hate to put you on the spot. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know that we're in the middle of trial right now. I don't know that there is. And we're starting okay. another trial on Tuesday. But Tony, it's up to you. Okay. All right. Well, I, I'll, I'll check before. I didn't mean to put her on the spot. Yeah. Sorry, Tony. Mike, Thanks, yes. Is this a little before conversation? I'm sorry, did you say Michael? Yeah, Michael. Yeah. Yeah, yes. You want me to put you into a breakout room? No, I'll just just you've got my cell, Royce. Just give just give me a call.